So you've seen some awesome display pieces on somebody's bookshelf or in the shops. Some of the models you can buy nowadays are amazing. Detail, the colour, they just look fantastic. Let's delve into the world of miniatures and models today. I want to run you through the process of creating your own miniature model from an idea in your head or a picture on the computer into a 3D representation you can put onto your mantelpiece and display. It's not too hard of a process, there's a few bits and pieces involved and I'm here to run you through the process, give you an introduction of what to expect because that doesn't just come out of the 3D printer like that. Some of the gear you'll need, the tools I use, just a very good introduction into it, hopefully get you motivated so you can get out there and start producing these yourself. In this section we'll cover what you need to know to get started with 3D printing both in terms of equipment and the process you go through. We'll begin by discussing the main types of 3D printers, which happen to be FDM and resin printers, and the big differences between them. The first question you're going to face is what type of printer you want to print your miniatures with. There are generally two types of printers people use for miniature printing. One's resin and uses UV light to cure the resin. The other is FDM, which basically melts hot plastic they both have their pros and cons. Resin printers will generally have a smaller build plate, will do your prints in a quicker time and up to a higher definition. A couple of the startling differences between them are to do with the quality of the print in the end. Now this is resin versus which is FDM. Definitely not perfect, but good for big functional pieces. that you're going to use, take a bit of a hammer in, they're pretty tough. A lot harder to paint, this is a bit more forgiving with the paint job, it's a bit smoother, um, you get a lot nicer finish, uh, but you can still make FDM look pretty good, especially, especially if it's viewed from a distance. Resin printers are considered higher definition, with smaller build plates and quicker print times. On the other hand, FDM printers are lower definition, but great for large scale projects huge build plates and the ability to print even a full-sized helmet for pretty cheap. FDMs are usually a little bit more complicated than the resin. The resin printers I find are basically plug and play. Um, there's not a lot of tweaking to do with the printer itself. Turn it on, fill it with resin, put in a file, print it, you've got your model. FDM printers are a bit more technical, um, there's a bit more on the slicing side of things, there's a lot more parameters to set, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, um, but also there's a lot of tweaks and improvements you can make. One thing you'll find with the FDM printers is they print a lot slower. To print on either a resin or an FDM printer, you need to take a 3D file, usually an STL file, or you can find these online, there's a number of places you can down, download free ones. Um, subscription services, there's a lot of ways to find 3D files of just about anything you want to print. Uh, the main thing is getting it onto your computer first, legally, then you use a piece of software called a slicer. This essentially takes the picture of the 3D file and breaks it into thin slices, which is essentially the information that your printer is going to use to print it. I'll delve into slices and some of the software and places to find 3D files in a further video. For now I just want to touch on the process that you do take a 3D image, break it into a whole lot of slices, a whole lot of layers, and then that gets transferred into your particular printer's code um, so that it can read this 3D file and know how to produce the print. So once you have the 3D file on the USB, FDM printers quite often use the old SD cards, then it's time to take it to the printer and print it. So in this, this video, we just want to go over the basics of the 3D printing side of things to get you a model nice, clean and prepared to take it that next step further for display, to get some paint onto it, to make it look like a bit of a masterpiece that you can show off. I want to show you a couple of examples of the different types of prints I've been able to use with my two different types of printer. Resin printers are the way to go for very small scale stuff if you want very small scale very nice detailed prints to 
paint up at a later stage. If the imprint is great for great for the large scale stuff or like these dice towers, something that you're going to use, it'll take a little bit of a beating because it's so much cheaper to print. The material itself compared to the resin is a lot cheaper. Resin, the UV resin can be quite pricey, but nothing in comparison to buying a full scale model. I've seen models like this scale selling for over a thousand dollars. By the time I'm done with this, I'm looking at my in my currency, maybe at maybe a hundred dollars, probably less. One model that I'll give you a bit more of a closer look on. This model here. So this is a mix of FDM printing of the big swamp hut itself. Which comes apart. That was printed on the FDM printer. And then these little guys, to get the definition to be able to paint them, were done on my resin printer. And they, they were separate models of just Stuck them on here to make a bit, a little bit of a diorama. You'll be able to see the difference in print quality, and it makes a huge difference when when you're painting it. So what you'll find with the resin printers, if you want to go with the bigger scale models, such as these, you'll be printing them in separate parts. So as you can see here, he comes off. That's a separate part. At the moment, this is just blue tacked together. Pieces such as this. There's one section here. One section here. One section here. So that was printed in three sections using a resin printer. This was printed in three sections using a resin printer. One section here. This section of the candle here and the candlestick holder itself. Whereas this, on the FDM printer, was printed in one piece. It's printed it all in one go, one continuous piece, inside and out. So one, one aspect of 3D printing, and this happens with both the FDM and the resin printers, is supports. So when this is printed um, for FDM, it sometimes needs a solid base to be able to lay the melted plastic onto so it will print an extra support up the side so when it gets to that point of needing to place some melted plastic there it has something to put it onto with the resin printers the supports are more for a part where resin has to be printed but there's there's nothing below it i'll, I'll show some examples of supports actually of the mushroom guys from my model so you can follow them quickly through their printing process the process itself for the resin printer is once you have your sliced file, loading it into your resin printer. When you tweak the settings and both FDM and resin printers need specific settings that change with temperature, humidity, um, other environmental conditions. This I'll delve into in a, in a future video where I'll look at more specifics of the 3D print itself. But for now, let's just look at the general overview of what's involved. So once your sliced file is loaded into the printer, basically you set an exposure time, press print, and you wait the desired time until the print's done. Uh, the supports will be printed automatically. Then there's the removal. So taking the build plate off, using a, using a scraper, you scrape, you literally scrape the resin off the build plate, and then you're left with uncured resin, supports still on your model, it's not ready yet. There's still a little bit of post-production to do. We then use some isopropyl alcohol to wash the print. And this washes all the uncured resin off the outside. Once this has been washed, easiest way to get rid of the supports is a tub of very warm water. Dunk the print in it for 30 seconds or so. And then basically the print rips off the supports. As you can see from some of these supports, it comes off pretty clean. You can see where the base was nicely sitting on these supports. Once the supports have been removed, we then let that dry. So we want the isopropyl alcohol to flash off, to uh, evaporate off the model. Then we place it into a curing station. A lot of 3D printers will have 
an accessory, get the wash and cure station at the same time. It makes life a lot, lot easier. Supports are often where we have a dry model, now it's time to cure it. So we put it into the curing station and curing times can vary. It can be a couple of minutes, up to four or five minutes for the larger prints. Also very dependent on the resin that you're using itself. Once this is cured, you basically have a hardened model that's re ready to go. You may want to do a little bit of cleanup. This is where once it's cured, we can use a sander, a file, a knife, whatever you need to, just to tidy the last little bits of supports off the model. Then she's ready to go. Um, FDM printers, once you have that 3D file sliced, load it into your printer, set it up and press go. It'll do a bottom layer, which is essentially the bottom layer of your model. From there, it will slowly go extrude out melted plastic. This is a much slower process um, as it literally does every, every millimeter inch of the model is extruded out of the nozzle, building up layer by layer very slowly until you have a finished model. Bear in mind that the whole time it's doing this, it's heating the bed. So the bed is heated with an element. This helps the adhesion of the plastic to stick to it while it's printing. Once that is cooled and the plastic is set, it, it scrapes off very easily. The interesting thing with the resin printer is because it's literally just by layer it doesn't matter if you build it, you print one model or 10 models, it will take the same amount of time. And what dictates your time for a resin printer is the height of the model. The higher it is, the longer it will take. It's some of the accessories you're going to need with your 3D printer. So the FDM printers are pretty good. There's not a lot of accessories you need afterwards to actually do the print. Um, if you want to get carried away and really into it, a lot of guys heavily go into the modifying of their 3D printers pushing it to its limits of printing faster, larger, basically getting it to print as quick as, as quick as it can. Basic set of tools for your FDM printer, scraper, some little nipper clippers to help remove supports, some little pliers just to help get into little nooks and crannies, get around, and some filament. The world of filament is huge, there's, there's so many different types things that will do all sorts. Now each each time you do change a filament between say PLA and TPU, which are the two different types of filament, you definitely need to tweak that printer to the optimal settings to print for that particular filament. I've been doing most of mine in PLA, which is the basic plastic, um, good for display, light, pretty cheap. So once you have some filament, you've got your printer set up, There'll be quite a bit of configuration to go into, and this will be dependent on the model itself. Um, the Chiron, which I use, very fiddly. Uh, it took me a long time to get it semi-dialed in, but it's doing some all right prints. Accessory-wise, that's that's about it. Once it's printed, once it's finished its print, and the bed is cooled, the print's good to go. Remove the supports, sand up any little tweaks, and it's good to go. Recent printer, what you're gonna need going to need your 3D printer. If you get a resin 3D printer and they have the option to buy a matching wash and cure station, I'd highly recommend it. This is a big part of the 3D printing process with resin, is washing and curing it. It just makes that process of the printing so much easier to do. So once you've got your 3D printer, your wash and cure station, there's definitely some other accessories you need. You'll need the UV resin. Check with your manif the manufacturer of your printer to see which ones they recommend. The other essential parts for 3D printing, some latex gloves, um, nitrile gloves if, if you want, whichever one suits you. If you have an allergy to latex, you can buy the latex-free nitrile gloves. Just make sure they fit. You're going to go through a lot of these. Um, you get a lot of resin on you, especially when you're removing supports and whatnot. You need a good supply of gloves. Uh, paper towels, scraper. You need two types of scraper. One plastic scraper, which is very soft, and this is what you use on the vat of resin itself. Then you need a hard scraper to scrape the build plate itself once you've completed the print. I also have a funnel and a strainer. I'll pick these up just from the paint shop. If you happen to have a fail on one of your prints, 
sometimes a little piece of resin can drop off into the vat. If you've noticed that you've had a fail and maybe a piece is missing or hasn't quite printed off, you need to drain that vat and filter it to make sure there's no bits of resin still inside that vat the next time you print. Blade is essential for all of these. If you think there's been a fail, make sure you drain and filter your resin before you put it back into your vat. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more. Cheers.